I tell you that the chlorine is involved in the rate determining step. You're adding more chloride. You can add more chloride by adding sodium chloride. <coughs> chloride is the, what's the name of the chloride in this mechanism? What's its reactivity? What is it? It's a nucleophile. Okay, so the nucleophile is involved in rate determining step, so that means it's SN2, right? So that tells us that we should do SN2, which would involve a backside attack, uh, and this is your product. How do we do? Um, so if I saw this on the test, but I didn't see that little blurb at the bottom, would you see that as SN1 or SN2? What do you mean you didn't see the blurb? No, like let's just say you that gave the blurb the was up there. Yes. Uh, it did be a little hard to know because it's a secondary carbon, and you can do either SN1 or SN2. So that's why I had to kind of give you some information. Um, yeah. But if you show an SN1 product, your product should be received. Um, so yeah, there are some reactions where it's hard to know, right? That's why I gave you some information here. Same thing with elimination. This could eliminate. It could do an elimination. Uh, it's hard to know if that be E1 or E2, because chlorine is sort of a is, chlorine, is, is, is chloride minus, is chloride a strong base? CL minus, strong base? What was our definition of strong bases? Anions or sp3 nitrogen, is chloride an, 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 an anion? So is it a strong base? According to that definition. Well, chloride is the conjugate base of ACL. ACL is a strong acid, that means the conjugate base is weak. You see the conflict? The chloride is not really a strong, that strong of a base. So can it do E2? Uh, if it did elimination, I'd probably say it's more like E1. Okay, we've got more to look at that. Uh, next one, uh, sodium amide. Sodium amide is going to deprotonate the terminal alkyne, make the satellite anion. And then we have a carbon with a leaving group. It's going to be SN2. SN2 with inversion. I showed the byproducts. Um, Wouldn't the deuterium be back? No, that's No, I drew the nucleophile over here. Chlorine is over there, so the nucleophile comes over here and it pushes everything that way. Um, in terms of R or S, uh, chlorine, carbon, deuterium, H is in the back. This is R. Um, This is inverted, but I think it's also R. Uh, because, is this still high priority? Carbon bonded to three carbons. Actually, it is. Uh, that's tough. I'm going to say this is still high priority because it's actually tough. I don't know if anybody in this room could tell the priority between these. Carbon, hmm, that's tough. This is inverted because the leaving group used to be on that side, it's over here. Okay? The leaving group is over is right here. So how does the nucleophile come in? It's then over here. Kicked it off. That's why it's over here now in the plane. You see how it's a backside attack? Now this is high priority group. Uh, it's one, two, three, H in the back, so this is S. The problem is I'm not quite sure how to use determine. Carbon bonded three carbons, carbon bonded three carbons. Then you go to the next one, carbon bonded one carbon. Carbon that's bonded to one carbon. Problem is you're gonna get over here and it may, this may actually be high priority group now, and if it is, it's it's actually R. And so you go from R to R, even with inversion. Okay? That's why, importantly, it's, you need to know if the leaving group, for example, if the leaving group is back, how does the nucleophile come in? The front. The front. So if the leaving group was d uh, dashed, you would draw the, the, the nucleophile or uh, now bold it. What if the leaving group was to the side, how would the nucleophile come in? In the plane to the side. So it would come in from over here in the plane to the side. 
That's why the new thing is now over here in the plane. Because the leaving group was over there in the plane. So I drew it inverted. It may very well just be R to R though. Because priority may have changed. And again, I don't know how to deal with this. And I wouldn't expect you to deal with it either. This is, this is the only body in one carbon. Unless there's something fancy about that, then you get out of here to this bromine, and that actually takes priority. Uh, okay. Uh, SN2 is going to be this guy here, right? Primary. Uh, bromine is better leaving group than chlorine. You don't even do SN2 there. Uh, why is this one better than this one? Resonance. Uh, it's not. What do you mean resonance stabilized? Can't the pi bond swing out when uh, cations form? This is SN2. We don't make cations with SN2. This is backside attack. There's no, SN, there's no cation with SN2, right? Right? So, Catherine? Um. Why, is, why is this one more reactive towards SN2 than? This one. The P orbital. P orbital next door. P orbital stabilizes the transition state. We've we stated that three or four times, and I don't know why you guys can't uh, remember that. Something about that just unable to be remembered. But that's what it's been for 10 years. I don't understand that. That concept, every uh, life of me, it's like whenever we bring it back up, it's like, never heard that. P over to the next door stabilizes the transition state of SN2. And I showed you a number of, uh, this, this is actually quite toxic because it reacts so fast with your biomolecules. DNA and proteins in your eyes, etc. Less toxic because while it will react by SN2, it's not going to react so quickly that it's going to be immediately toxic. Uh, do SN2 with this, you're probably going to have to heat it a little bit. Okay? You're probably not going to have to heat that, it's just boom, it's going to react. Uh, Salvazis reaction with ethanol. Well, <coughs> ethanol, what's the mechanism we're doing here? SN1, so it's actually going to be this guy because cation. Now we're making cation, and this would be a tertiary. Not only would it be a tertiary, but it would also be resin stabilized by bond. So here's where you have resin stabilized, and that's your argument for being better than that one. And this is just going to ionize faster because bromine's a better leaving group, which means it will leave easier. Um, okay. That guy's not going to leave. How do we do on those two? Ah, uh, this is five molecular sodium hydroxide. The bully is going to be involved. It's great will double. How do we do? Questions about that one? You guys for another answer? If I got it right? Good. Uh, mechanism. Uh, <laughs> Permeate the OH. Look at here, we're making this ring. We got the oxygen. Uh, the oxygen is bonded to the carbon with the fiddle or the benzene ring. Uh, we can protonate either OH and then we're gonna maybe we're gonna have to ionize. Do you want to ionize the one on the right or this one? Yeah, that one, because you can envision a tertiary carbocation. So I protonated and then I ionized. Got this carbocation. This can act as a nucleophile, but if this came over here and attacked it, it'd be a seven membrane ring. So instead we do a hydride shift, get the cation on here. Now, this is tertiary and it went to secondary, 
Well, actually, it's still tertiary. I thought it was secondary. So you go from tertiary to tertiary, but why is this cation better? Because it's resin stabilized with the benzene ring. Benzylic. Okay. Also, you just have to have this if you're going to get this product because now we can make a six membered ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. That gives that. And we just need to remove the proton from the oxygen afterwards. If you do not move the proton first, who removed the proton first before you? Why? What base did you use? Uh, HSO4 minus. HSO4 minus is not a strong base. Sodium hydroxide will not even remove that. Right? Okay. HSO4 minus is way, 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 way weaker than sodium hydroxide. Okay. But here, now we can remove it because now that H is more acidic and we remove it to reform the catalyst. There's a big difference between removing an H on the neutral oxygen versus removing an H on the positive oxygen. We're under acidic conditions. You're not going to make a strong anion under acidic conditions. And in fact, look. Nowhere on my mechanism do I have an anion. Other than that, the conjugate base of the strong acid. That's a key point. Under, under acidic conditions, typically all your intermediates are positively charged. Under basic conditions, typically all your intermediates are negatively charged. Somebody else have a question? Number four, why is that blue three double? Because sodium hydroxide is involved in rate coming step, and we double its concentration. So if you look at your rate equation, it's K times concentration of both of them. If you, if you double this, then you double the whole. What if we double the concentration of both the bromide and the sodium hydroxide? Uh, oh, if we double the rate of both, <coughs> quadruple, right? Rate equation? Y'all did rate equations in Jim Kim? Okay, any questions about this? Okay, that'll be posted upstairs. Uh, I have the um, group lab reports from Friday Lab. I'll pass that back. Uh, if you please pass in your uh, shaking up stirred. If we could have uh, Thursday Lab first. Thursday lab. Friday lab.
anybody uh, lose a uh, textbook from in lab last week? What? Anybody lose a textbook last week? Nobody missing a textbook? Okay. Look at this reaction here. Leaving groups on the tertiary carbon. Strong base. This is a classical E2. That's the only choice. Of our four different mechanisms for substitution elimination, E2 is the only choice. Uh, there's, a, there's two different beta hydrogens. We have beta hydrogen here, and it's going back to HA. And we have beta hydrogen here. HB. Um, which one will give the removal of which one gives the Saint Seth product? Hey, removal of HA gives the Saint Seth product. You would have double bond between here. And that would be tetra-substituted. We drew them out. Didn't we draw them out? I believe we did. Removal of HB would actually give a disubstituted alkene. That would be called the Hoffman product. Which one is thermodynamically preferred? A. Removing HA to give the Hoffman. I'm sorry, Saitsev. HA is more hysterically hindered, though. Well, what type of base are we using? Hysterically hindered or not? Not sterically handed. Hydroxide is one of the smallest bases you can have. It should have no trouble taking HA. Okay. Problem is, double bond here, there's two different stereoisomers. Did we draw them? Yes. Okay. Which one are we going to get? Well, whenever you remove the HA in the bromine, the H and the bromine need to be anti coplanar, or so called anti periplanar. That's going to be highly preferred. And indeed, it's going to be preferred. The only way syncoplanar would take place is if anticoplanar is not possible for some reason. <clears throat> we'll have to say more about that. Okay. The best way to tell with HA and bromine or anticoplanar is to draw this in a Newman projection. <clears throat> Now your book or some other professor may say, hey, do it, you can do it this way. Well, whatever works for you. But I always do it by drawing a Newman. That's the way I'm going to show you. Okay, so let's draw this in a Newman projection. Circle, circle, dot, dot. Let's pretend we're standing over here looking through there. Okay? It's not a fissure. It's a crosshair, but a Newman. So we're looking down the bond. There's the front carbon, and here's the back carbon. All right, circle, circle, dot, dot. First carbon, I see what's coming straight down? Methyl. Methyl. I'm going to draw in the ME. All right, that's an ME. Make sure that's methyl. As I'm looking through here, what's going to the right towards you guys? Ethyl. Ethyl. It's going to my right. I'm, I'm looking at it, it's going to my right. What do I see? I'm looking at it, it's going to my right. Ethyl. Okay, what's going to my left? H. H. H going back. So if I'm looking at it over here and it's going that way, that's to my left. There's the front carbon. And that's HA. Let's keep track of it because I've seen students who start doing this and they start looking at the wrong H. HA is the one we're going to eliminate here, yeah? Okay, back carbon. Let's look past the, Okay, back over here. What's coming straight down? T butyl. T butyl. It's actually eclipsed with the methyl. Okay? I'm going to try to just draw it like that, but it's, these are actually a clips. Okay, back here, what's coming towards you guys? H. Methyl. Methyl, so it's on my right. Okay? And I'll draw that in as methyl. Okay, it's got an HB on it. Uh, and what's back there going behind the wall to my left? Bromine. 
There it is. The bromine and the H is eliminated, and these are right in front of each other. They're close. They're supposed to be. So the coplanar, that's the same plane. But they're not anti coplanar, they're syn coplanar. If the bromine is here, we want the H to be over here. Well, we can do that. We can rotate the front, or you can rotate the back, either way you want to go. I'm going to rotate the front. I'm going to redraw this. with the H over here, that's HA, I'm just turning the front uh, 180 degrees, like a stairwell. That goes there. The ethyl's actually going to come here. And the front methyl is actually going to go up top. I just turn the front. The back is the same. Bromine. Methyl, that's a methyl on that carbon, back carbon from my view. And then what's down here? T butyl? So that's where I just rotated the front. Now the bromine and the H are anti coplanar. Plane is this. If I hold a piece of paper up here, they're both sitting on that plane. Okay? Or, okay? And they're anti. And this is how it would eliminate. Uh, is here, and we'll call this black here H, and it's there. Okay? I'm just showing the H. There's two other things on the front carbon. I'm just showing the bromine. There's two other things on the back carbon. But there they are. Now it's turned. Okay? Now I could just take this whole thing and do it like that. The plane is slanted here. Now the plane is straight up and down, but, but that's the plane. We'll go back to how it's drawn. When this eliminates, the base takes the H, the electrons move in and make the pi bond. They're going to make the pi bond between the front and back carbon. We're not really going to be able to see that here. Boom, and this gets kicked off. Or if you hold it up like this, these move in and this gets kicked off and we make pi bond. But in the end, when all this happens, it's all concerted. Base takes the H. The electrons move in between the two carbons. It's hard to show that here. The electrons move in, and then this gets kicked off all at the same time. And when this happens, these groups have no chance to rotate. However they are here, they're going to be stuck there when the alkene is formed. Well, these two are on the same side. And the two methyls are on the same side. So whenever you put in the alkene, here's the alkene referring to front and back carbon. The two methyls are on the same side. Now I see, I see students put the both methyls on the end here because they have something same in their head or your head. No, both methyls are not on the same carbon. They're on the same side of the alkene if you consider that a plane here. <coughs> the other is, now since it's symmetrical, it really doesn't matter where we put the T-butyl, it's the same thing, but I'll just draw the T-butyl here. And the other one, there's ethyl. Again, it doesn't matter, actually, if that's the front carbon, the front carbon actually has the ethyl, right? But 
doesn't matter because if we just if we put the t-bill here in the ethyl it's the same exact time. Uh, in the end, the t-bill and the ethyl are on the same side, and this is what z. We drew we drew the two on Friday. We drew the e and the z. What did we draw on Friday? We drew both of them? Yes. Okay. Well, that's what you get. You get Z. Is that the best possible product? Is that the thermodynamically best product? What would be the best one? It would be the E form of the um, St. Seth. Actually, you get the Z here because there's a stereochemical requirement. Because the H and the bromine are going to highly prefer to be anti coplanar when the elimination takes place. Because it's concerted, the methyls end up on one side of the plane of the alkene and the two big groups actually the other side. And you actually get the Z product. Now, if you did this reaction by an E1, what would you get? What product would you get if you did E1? You get the E product. Because what is E product always gives what? Thermodynamic equilibrium. E1 gives the most stable alkene you can possibly draw. That would be the E version of this. Okay, we said all that on Friday. Okay, how about the next one? Uh, first off, are we doing substitution or elimination? The question is before I raise this here. Substitution or elimination here? Where do you want to start by asking some other questions? Is it unimolecular or bimolecular? Why bimolecular? Because, what do you mean by anionic? Strong base. We have a strong something. Strong base slash strong nucleophile. Anion here, strong. It'll be bimolecular. Okay, so is it SN2 or E2? Could it be both? Can you do SN2 here, Anna? Yeah, it's a secondary. Maybe. Secondary, yes. Does this have any sterics? It's not on the oxygen, but it's right next door. Lots of sterics. Is that going to push it towards substitution or elimination? Elimination. Yes. The more sterically hindered your nucleophile is, more prone it is to do elimination instead. We go back to that time when we looked at that, uh, there's probably some exclamation points there. And it also pointed out, probably when we looked at such, we, we said, go back over there to that substitution and out, we probably said that it, that's a good, going to be a good base for elimination because of the sterics. Okay, yes, it's E2. Because it's steric, now it could do SN2, Usually a very bulky base slash nucleophile usually is, is used because if you want E2. Now I could give you other information that would maybe help you get to that point. Now that we say it's E2, I might even tell you it's E2. And then show the product. I mean you give me a variety of ways. So show the E2 product. Uh, Hoffman or St. Seth? Which one is more preferred? Which one you're leaning towards? Okay. There's, a, there's a beta hydrogen here. And there's actually two here. And they're identical. I'm not going to draw any stair chemistry because it's both here. St. Seth or Hoffman? Somebody said Hoffman. Why Hoffman? Well, isn't it like usually the kinetic product if it's like, isn't, doesn't usually the kinetic product form if the nucleophile is sterically hindered? Yeah, I call it a base. Because when you eliminate it, it's acting as a base. A base. 
Yeah, the more sterically hindered your base is, the more prone it is to doing Hoffman. Up here we did Saintep because it wasn't sterically hindered. Okay. Now, can this not give you the Saintep product? Well, we maybe have to make this statement. And how sterically hindered is this? Um, this is where you have variation, okay? This is where there's variation in expected answers. Some instructors will approach this by saying, hey, it's sterically hindered, so it's not substitution. Elimination, and they're, they're fine with just saying that the Saints F is going to be the product. With the eliminate, with the steric just pushing you towards elimination. Other times it's well, it's so sterically hindered that the actually the Hoffman's going to be the problem. A little bit of ambiguity here. But think about this though. There's two types of there's in general two types of questions. There's a big difference between a multiple choice question and a just supply the answer question. If it's multiple choice, there's usually only one answer correct. For example, what if it's multiple choice and a substitution product shown with, with inversion and racemic and then some weird crazy product shown and then a SATEF elimination product shown? That is, no Hoffman product is even shown. Which one would you say is the answer? Sites F. Now you may think, I think this should be Hoffman, but guess what? No Hoffman product is shown, so you gotta choose one. So you go with the Sites F. So you see how that, okay? Now if no answer is given at all, then you're like, should I show Sites F or Hoffman? And you don't have any guidance. Well, that's what I'm telling you. It can be uh, a little bit you know, I know this uh, promotes um, state stuff. But again, some would just expect Hoffman to be the problem. Okay, I may give you some guidance, like on that first one on the quiz, I gave you some information to help you decide, right? Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we show both? the Hoffman and the Saitsev product. Show them both. And actually, time is going on today. Uh, I want you to do this on your own. So both Sates F and Hoffman product here. We will look at it on when, Wednesday? No. Friday? Friday. A week oh. from today. Oh. Yeah. Is that when we're back? Yeah. My bad. I don't know if I can go a week without <laughs> coming here. That's going to be hard. It really is. Okay, let's look down here. What is TDA? Anybody? Shown on the substitution handout, and had a comment. No, triethylamine. Triethylamine. Strong, uh, is that a strong base? Yeah. Is it an anion? No. Is it SP3 nitrogen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, is it sterically hindered? <coughs> Actually, yeah. it's a sterically hindered strong base. That's not super strong because it's not an anion, but it's strong enough to be considered strong. Sterically hindered. If you go back to the substitution, we said that that base is often used for E2 eliminations. Called it sterically hindered, it won't do substitution that well, but it will act as a base. Because remember, to act as a base, steric is not that important because the H is so small. Okay. 
THF is just a solvent. We got a sterically hindered strong base. Okay, it's E2. Ah, we have a ring here. <coughs> Would you rather make double bond here or there? That is, would you rather remove HA or HB? Don't consider anything other than substitution of the alkene. Would you rather have an alkene here or there? Down? <coughs> Those even have the ethyl group on it, be more substituted. Problem is, is that anti coplanar or trans coplanar or anti periplanar? Anti is synonymous with trans. Is that trans to the leaving group? No, it's actually cis. be anti-coplanar or trans-coplanar, same thing, they have to be trans. These are cis. They're not going to be able to be trans-coplanar. Okay? We draw this in a chair confirmation. What position does the iodine have to be in for it to eliminate by E2? It has to be an axial. Draw this up. Now let's look at the next door carbon. Is the ethyl down? Is the ethyl axial or equatorial? Is the ethyl axial or equatorial? It's axial. Why? Because they're trans. And trans to up would be down. So here's the HB. The iodine and the ethyl are anti coplanar. Straight up, straight down. These are not anti coplanar. Let's actually do this. Let's label the other one up. Let's put the HA4 and back, let's put HC. Because actually up there, one's forward, one's back. Go down and here. Which one is straight down here, axial? HC. And up here is HA. Of the three H's, which one is anti coplanar? HC. Okay. That guy. And that's the one will be eliminated. Now, over here, the, one of these will be eliminated. The product here is HA is remaining, okay? And there's your product. I'm sorry, we, we lost the stair. This is still dash. We actually get a disubstituted double bond, not a tri-substituted because of the stereochemical requirement. We're out of time. Questions on that? I'll uh, call out the corresponding author, or for those who did not give a corresponding author, I'll call out the first author. Lord Churchwell. John Butler. Here.